Hello. Um, so uh, now, today, I will uh, give thoughts on the Wishbone TV movie, Wishbone's Dog Days of the West, inspired by, I think, uh, just one story. I'm not entirely sure how many, but uh, at least one story in uh, O. Henry's collection of short stories called Heart of the West. Uh, I will do that, and then my homework for next time is to watch this, uh, an interview uh, with Wishbone and Wishbone's owner, which is on the Lyric Studios PLC uh, YouTube channel, alongside a couple of episodes of Wishbone, including the Sleepy Hollow one and some episodes of Barney that I might watch, not for YouTube videos, just to go back and see what that was like. And also I'll read uh, an oral history of Wishbone called Top Dog that was in Texas Monthly a couple of years ago. When was it? Oh, just last year. Uh, not long ago at all. Uh, so that's, that, that's the plan going forward. And then uh, the 90s version of Land of the Lost is the next uh, looking back at thing that I'll, that I'll do. Um, but getting right to the point, I'm not familiar with O. Henry at all. Um, this is my first experience with O. Henry. O. Henry, by the way, also uh, sometimes known uh, by those who knew him best as William Sidney Porter. And, uh, you know, just like George Eliot's not really George Eliot, but in many ways kind of is. So I'll call him O. Henry. Um, but I, my first real exposure to O. Henry was when I uh, referenced uh, a title uh, of a Willa Cather book. I think it was O. Pioneers. And I, I said... So, oh, somebody else was had something called O Pioneers, and I said, oh, is it uh, inspired by the uh, Willa Cather book, O Pioneers? And he said, no, uh, the O. Henry poem, which probably also inspired the Willa Cather title. And I don't know if uh, it, it probably did. Um, but uh, that, I just, I'm, this is my first real, real exposure to the work of O. Henry. And I was amused, and I will look into it. I'm not... Not as eager as I was with George Eliot, but, um, but uh, Wishbone, still my uh, still the, the catalyst for my interest in in literature. Um, so the story, the O. Henry story, concerns a man called Long Bill Longley. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, that is Wishbone's character, uh, Long Bill Longley, and his friend Tom. And uh, they are uh, cattle drivers. Uh, in the very beginning of the story, that's how they uh, that's how they start out. Um, there's a lot of narration over that, and it's you get cute. Uh, you know, the, the the human character Tom is on a horse and rustling the cattle, or what, whatever the word is. But uh, Wishbone is uh, chasing them around. Wishbone being a dog, there is later the Im Wishbone does ride a horse, kind of. Um, just off camera or below where the camera shows probably were a lot of people keeping the horse which was probably confused about having a dog on top of it keeping the horse steady um, but you know they don't have wishbone galloping around on a horse they have wishbone galloping around as a dog chasing the horses and I made a note they, they don't they then they don't have sheep dogs or you know a lot of these sorts of I don't watch a lot of westerns but um, oftentimes you see dogs corralling the uh, beasts of burden, and um, but if, if they'd done that, they would have looked too much like which one? I don't know. Or maybe they just couldn't afford more than one dog on set. But anyway, that was cute. But then, uh, as the uh, the characters progress, um, they uh, Long Long Bill uh, becomes a banker, and uh, and uh, it, you know loaning money to people. Uh, including his friend Tom, and that's they're kind of settling down now in this western uh, pioneer town, um, and uh, and they have they go to lunch every day at uh, what's the character the character's name uh, is uh, Maggie Dugan Maggie Dugan's restaurant, and um, you know they have their routine they have their life and of course the uh, a story happens because that life is upended. Um, Tom wants to marry Maggie for one thing, and she has no interest in marrying any man ever. Uh, doesn't say that she has any interest in marrying any women, just no marriage. 
Um, and, uh, and O. Henry probably wouldn't have included that detail anyway. But I don't know anything about O. Henry. Maybe he would have. Uh, so, and then a uh, bank examiner comes to town and forces uh, Wishbone's character, Long Bill, to call the loan that he gave to Tom because he, you know, it was a, it was a handshake. It was an, I know this guy, I'm going to help him out, I'm going to give him a loan uh, without any collateral, which you're not technically supposed to do, but uh, it was the Old West, it was, uh, it was how things worked. Um, and so now they've got to raise, I think it's $10,000, and I, and they ultimately do, and I am still not clear on how, which is why I have to read the story. Meanwhile, in the real world, Wishbone's actual uh, real world, uh, there's a summer festival, and, uh, and uh, there's, a, there's a glee club featuring uh, Molina, one of uh, uh, Travis, the owner of the sporting goods store, his daughter, is singing uh, with her glee club on stage, and there's rigging, as there often is, uh, which they're outside in the middle of a park-type area or town square or town circle, and so it's not bolted to walls like in a theater. It's bolted to the, to the ground, and the wiring starts coming loose. That's the, the wiring that's holding up the, the big uh, uh, thing that the lights hang from, and... Uh, and it, it starts to fall, and Wishbone, uh, being a dog with excellent hearing, uh, detects that something's wrong before any humans do, do, and Wanda happens to be holding on to Wishbone because Wishbone's on a leash for once, uh, and people, Joe and uh, Ellen, have been playing musical leash with his leash, and w Wanda ends up with it, and so Wishbone pulls her toward the stage where he hears something is amiss, and then he runs onto the stage and starts barking so that the kids will get off the stage. And Wanda runs up also and starts, when she figures it out, she starts waving the kids off the stage. And all the kids get away except Molina. But then the thing cr comes crashing down and Wanda dives, grabs Molina, and they and pulls her off the stage and becomes a hero and attracts press attention. And uh, naturally, uh, this being uh, a uh, fictional uh, thing that needs drama, uh, press attention here, as it usually does, means something bad. Uh, and this uh, slimy reporter character starts, uh, you know, he's, he says, I, I'm here first on the scene, I've got the story, it's my story, and I'm going to milk it, which means I'm going to keep it going, find all sorts of unsavory things. Um, and we learn, uh, through his research, uh, that Wanda is apparently very wealthy. They don't put it that way, but she apparently owns... She owns the Oakdale Chronicle, we knew that, uh, runs the Historical Society, we knew that, but she owns the building that the Oakdale Chronicle is in, she owns the building that Pepper Peets is in, uh, and she owns the building that the Sporting Goods store is in, and apparently a lot of buildings, I guess the Pepper Peets one was a firehouse, one of these buildings was a historic firehouse and she didn't want it, uh, you know, torn down so that something gaudy could be put up, and so a lot of this is preservation and, but she's apparently also very, very wealthy. Um, newspaper money, I guess, which in the 90s was still a thing. And, um, but, you know, people start to, she's, she's not, uh, obviously, after 50 episodes, the audience doesn't know this about Wanda, so as she says, she keeps, keeps it quiet because it's just, uh, it's just the way things are, there's nothing really to it. Um, it she's rich, she's the town rich person. Um, she, she uh, and it's and it's ostensibly for, like I said, preservation, uh, good motivation. Um, but people start to look at her differently and start to take advantage of uh, uh, her her kind of you know she's down, so let's kick her and get some things, including this uh, guy Leon King, who owns the uh, television station that's been reporting on her. He wants the Chronicle, and uh, he goes to the family, the descendants of the people who Wanda's father, Giles Gilmore, apparently uh, bought it from, and uh, I guess technically it's still in his name, for reasons we find out, um, and this Leon King guy buys it from that guy officially, and then kicks Wanda out. And uh, fortunately, there is... Uh, 
an, a, an old person, uh, Grandpa uh, John Stone, who knows exactly uh, what to look for to fix the situation. And this is uh, a character called Hank's grandfather. Hank is a new kid. He's kind of in between the ages of the Marcus, Jimmy, Emily kids and the Joe, Sam, David kids. And there is no David in this episode. And I wonder if I will learn why when I read that uh, oral history of Wishbone. But it's not on the Wikipedia site. Uh, this, uh, this whole, this movie has its own Wikipedia thing, not like the episodes are just listed, uh, but this has its own, and it, it doesn't say why there's no David. Um, but there is a different uh, kid. He is uh, black like David was, and his grandfather is very old, one of the oldest uh, people in town. Um, and they show they show way back when he was a kid, uh, I guess in the 20s or the 30s, I forget exactly which, but um, maybe the 40s, it looks a lot further back in time than it probably is if he's still alive and as old as he is supposed to be. But he witnessed the deal being made between Giles and uh, Stuckton, I think, is the uh, is the character's name. Uh, skeleton, skeleton, Abel Skeleton uh, lost uh, in a poker game. Lost the Oakdale Chronicle fair and square to Giles Gilmore. And the the transfer of ownership was written on the back of uh, a piece of a tearaway calendar. Uh, so nothing official, official, but official and legitimate. And finding this, and they apparently also preserved the uh, uh, Giles' winning poker hand, two eights and three queens, I believe it was, and I don't know what that means. Um, but all preserved on a plaque that slid down between two things and got lost, but they find it, and they report, the Oakdale Chronicle reports on it, and Wanda gets the thing back. Um, and like I said in the O'Henry thing, there are stops along the way, but uh, Tom's brother, I think, shows up with enough money to pay the, uh, the loan back, and I don't know what the loan was for initially, uh, maybe to set up a business. Um, but we find out that, that uh, Wanda also, she loaned people, she, has, she had a lot of money, she loaned Pepper Pete the money to start Pepper Pete's, she loaned Travis the money to start the sporting goods store. Um, so a good, a good, silent, quiet guardian who just wants to uh, keep the town's history alive. Uh, the town eccentric, but beloved. Um, so yeah, let me see if there's anything else that I wrote down. Wishbone on a Horse mentioned that. Um, there is, you know, a, a drunk shoot 'em up character scene that uh, that is a large part of the reason why this episode of Wishbone is an hour and a half long, and I didn't mind it. It didn't feel like a, an hour and a half. It uh, didn't feel like 26 minutes, but uh, it didn't, it, I, uh, you know, I questioned whether or not I could watch Wishbone a single thing for an hour and a half straight, and it wasn't hard. Um, uh, yeah, so I think that's all that I, uh, all that I, uh, thought worth mentioning. Um, it starts, the dramatization part starts with the character O'Henry, um, and says a little bit about him, and then it shows him opening his journal, and it opened onto a screen of the Old West, which is where he is, um, but that's, that's how we get into the story. So that's the... The last episode of Wishbone that exists, and I've now seen all of Wishbone, uh, most of it. Uh, I came kind of full circle. I saw Wishbone, was inspired to read the books, I read the books, I watched Wishbone having read the books, except for those that I haven't. Uh, Silas Marner I look forward to. I'll look into O. Henry. Uh, maybe I'll get that Heart of the West. Uh, and I read some things along the way. I read that Edgar Allan Poe uh, short story. I read that uh, Wadsworth Longfellow, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow uh, narrative poem. I will read the Iliad and the Odyssey, and I'll, I'll get more uh, legends in my literary diet. Um, 
there were two Jane Austen adaptations. There were three Shakespeare adaptations, three Robert Louis Stevenson adaptations, and three Dickens adaptations. There was a Wilkie Collins, which I love. Um, there was uh, my one of the Jane Austens was my favorite Jane Austen, and one of the Dickenses was my favorite Dickens. Was my favorite Shakespeare? Not my favorite Shakespeare is King Lear, and then also I love Othello, and uh, but the Tempest. Okay, so the Tempest. Um, yeah, so I'm going to leave that there, and I'm done with this pad. I'm going to save all my notes, and the next time I uh, post a wishbone video, it will be hopefully with some interesting uh, trivia that I learn from the Texas Monthly thing, the YouTube interview, and maybe I'll try to find some other things as well. Uh, check out Wishbone and check out these uh, these books or any books. Uh, and uh, let's find another tale.